Someone commented a while ago about life being either like a merry-go-round or a roller coaster. Obviously, the roller coaster is a lot more fun, but it has its ups and downs. We feel this a lot while living this lifestyle. You can be so proud of a rigging project you've just worked on, and then the next day be caught in a storm. Whoa. Holy sh! Or you can hike through a rainforest, no cares in the world. And then a termites falling in their hundreds from the sky onto your lovely teak wood deck. Hundreds and thousands of termites in the air. Huge ones with massive wings and they're landing all over our boat. I think, in a strange way, it's what makes this lifestyle so addictive. We aren't sat wondering what it feels like to get your heart rate up or dreaming about seeing the world. We are doing it. And actually, if storms and termites are a price to pay for this life, then take our money. For those who have joined our story here, hi, we're Becca and Zach. We bought our boat Haley last March after saving for years. And after six months of figuring it all out in the UK, oh. We ditched the lines and really started the adventure. So come along with us for the highs, the lows, and absolutely everything in between. Because we're not just doing it. We're bloody doing it. Before we launch into finishing off fitting our new force day, we thought it was about time for a storm update. We last left you with the news that a hurricane was coming our way and we had spent the last week obsessively tracking it. And now it was a few hours before it was due to hit. It's the day of the supposed hurricane. I mean, it's not a hurricane any longer. It died down to a storm yesterday, luckily, um, but it was always forecast to become a hurricane, which was pretty, pretty crazy. One of the weirdest things that we've found is everyone is facing north as opposed to east, where the trade winds usually come from. And over the course of tonight, there'll just be a full 360 in the anchorage. And yeah, fingers crossed, boats aren't anchored too close because it's going to be a, an interesting one given how usually consistent the trades are here. So weird. East. <laughs> Zach had seen some bigger waves coming in when he was surfing earlier and wanted to bring me out to see them. And after saying hello to our little friend Brownie, <laughs> We reached the headland. Oh my god. Oh, it's like a deep water. Look at it. Oh, it's obviously those rocks there. Phenomenal. Look at the coast. Did you expect that? No. I knew it was big, but obviously when it wraps around the headland here, it loses a lot of its power. But, my god, that boat out there is nuts. They are really nuts. That out there, though, is incredible. Look at the power of that storm. It's not even a hurricane. I know. Imagine if, what a hurricane would do. on the quiet, calm dock. It's actually really eerie. There's this like smell in the air. And the sky just feels like thick with power. I can't really explain. You do not want to be out there right now. And I just, I hope that the islands that are going to be hit, we're not even going to hit here. The heart of the storm just on the brink of a hurricane but the heart of the storm is hitting St Lucia tonight. I think since becoming a sailor myself I have such a bigger respect for the ocean and weather and storms. I've never even battered an island when a storm's run through now it's like it's not your life's on the line by any means and I don't want it to seem that way but obviously if we make a wrong move and you get caught in that it just oh.
break out there, people actually go out there and surf it out there. And I was asking if they had skis or um, ribs that they take out there. And he's like, oh, no, a lot of us just paddle out there from here. And that's how it's far is it? It's a massive paddle. And it would, the, like over a mile. Crazy. He actually writes the local surf report here. Yeah, really nice guy. He knows how to rain here, Zach. So, today, today it is the aftermath of Storm Brett and we're just getting the remnants now, which is rain <laughs> and a lot of it. So yeah, this is how our day looks. We're monitoring our battery usage because we're already down to 12.5 volts. So hopefully we won't have to run our engine later. And yeah, that's just how our day is going. So that's looking at how to assemble a Furlix because we've got ourselves a that second-hand Furlix from that guy. He's so nice. I assume he's paying for it, but. Um, yeah, we've got that on board and he's just handing us like small parts at a time <laughs> So we now need to figure out how to assemble it all, but that's fine We'll figure it all out yeah, It'll be all right During the big gust we were noticing the stern getting pretty close to the concrete dock Jeez! Due to how the lines were tied for boy, we couldn't pull ourselves any more forwards So it's time to move more fenders my swimsuit because I was about to go out there and I don't want to get all my clothes wet. But this this is this is storm. Zach's out there adding loads of fenders and our steps were down and we had the two support struts for our steps out and he's folded them in and just put a ton of fenders but we're really getting put. I'm just praying that the boy the small boy you were on is gonna yeah, I'm moving the dinghy up, but I, uh, the, I hope the, the boy we're on holds because otherwise we're just going to get ploughed into the concrete dock. Ugh. This is like at least 30. There's waves breaking on the concrete dock. I think it's going to tear our tarp as well. Oh, well. <laughs> That's when I thought it wouldn't be bad for us here. Maybe I jinxed it. I know it'll pass though, but yeah. A little intense when it does happen. It's not like going in a house and just shutting all your doors and windows and shutting the curtains and hiding out. It's just you're very exposed to the elements living on a boat, so yeah. Luckily, a little while later, the rain died down and aside from the colour of the water... We're in the ultimate poopy water this morning, aren't we? Mm -hmm. We already continue with our second force day project.
going so well until we started seeing flying bugs everywhere. Landing in our hair, on the concrete, in the sea, on our deck. Birds were circling above us and diving to catch them. We asked the guys working in the yard what they were and they replied, they're rain bugs. They come out after it rains heavily from a storm. A quick Google search, however, showed us that rain bugs were in fact termites in disguise. They can't fly that well, so they rely on the wind to carry them to find a mate. Then they land on a bit of wet wood, reproduce and build a colony. The issue was our boat was that perfect bit of wet wood for them. Well, this is horrible. We didn't realize that a byproduct of the rain is just hundreds and thousands of termites in the air. Huge ones with massive wings and they're landing all over our boat. And for those that don't know, termites are just the worst for wood and we have so much wood on the boat. And veggies everywhere. But we're like midway through our fourth day, we can't even move off this dock. And it's just like thousands of them. And I'm just like, I'm really hoping none of them are going to get inside because that would just be awful. <laughs> That's not even an over exaggeration. It would be awful. It'd be fun. It, it, like every time it rains here, they can't just, every boat has to termites so I'm sure it will be fine but we're just going to be super on the ball keeping all hatches shut and yeah that's not how I expected our day today to go. I thought the wind and the rain would be our issue not the bugs. And so we paused the force day assembly to run around and kick as many of these bugs off as possible. Anyway a few hours later the swarming had died down and it was time to finish the project. <laughs> <laughs> the next day the sun finally came back out and we decided we needed a break from the dock we'd been recommended by other cruisers to go to a hash while we were here so that's exactly what we were doing <laughs> So today you'll be hatching. A hash is a trail marked with blobs of shredded white paper. Now when we say on on, that means go. You go off in the direction of the trail, we may point you in the right direction, and you look for the blobs of shredded white paper. You follow those blobs along the trail, at some point you'll get to a circle made of shredded white paper. That means that the trail goes off in more than one direction, only one is correct. If you're following the trail and you get to an X made out of? Right, you, you catch a drift. If you get to an X made of shredded white paper, it means you did not win a prize, you're on the wrong trail. So you have to go back to the circle and look for another trail marked with blobs of? Right. Always look for the paper. Now you follow the trail. If somebody gets to an X ahead of you, they will shout out on back, which means they're going back to the circle and you'll be well advised to go back. If they shout out on on, it means that they believe that they are on the right track and you can choose to follow them or not, right? If at some point you, you've lost the paper, you can't find paper, you're not sure if you're on the trail, shout out are you and listen for an on on and follow on on, right? Now do all of this correctly. Follow somebody who looks as though they know what they're doing, and you'll be back here in time to enjoy some cold beverage, some hot food, and some good music. Right? Simple and straightforward. Before we were off, people with new shoes had to drink a beer out of them, or something like that. And then it was time. We had five miles ahead of us, and the energy of the group was high. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so 
So we're currently doing a hash, which is a weekly thing they do in, here in Grenada. It's basically for, well, it was started, and then started in Malaysia. It was started in Malaysia by two expat Brits, or three. And, and it was um, to replicate chasing a ha the hare hunts, wasn't it? Yep, yep. Yeah, so um, it's nothing to do with that now. <laughs> but it's just kind of a bit of fun for people to walk or run. Um, they lay out a trail of paper and yeah people and their kids and their dogs and you can either walk or run it and yeah it's a lot of fun it's still pretty warm but we're just following a lot more people and yeah it's good fun sweaty fun <laughs> I forgot to mention as well that Zach is running ahead. He fancied a run, so. He's still running? Yeah, I think so. I said there's a beer stop around the corner. I was saying um, that his mum, yeah, she's she started yeah, running yeah, at 40. Now she runs ultra marathons every few weeks. Oh. 55 miles she runs. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I am not a runner. We've been running too. We're just yeah, we've been running. Way. We're just, you know, playing it chill. We can't get, yeah, can't get too ahead of everyone else. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It reminds me of Dominica, so like rich and green. Got sweat. Everything into my eyes. Being salted by that. <laughs> I'll jiggle it nicely for you. Okay. Ah, welcome home. Well, it's a bit of shade, so I could call yeah. this space home for a well, bit. It's got natural <laughs> cooling ability. Yeah. Jack and Jill went up the hill. Both had a buck and a quarter. Jill came down with two fifty. Look how sweaty I am. We just finished, and Zach won the whole thing, which is very cool. And we got some Kong soup. <laughs> Do you want to try some first? Had some how, how was it? It's good. Yeah. yeah, very dirty. Yeah, but good. There you go, Max. Go on. How is it? Oh, it's a dumpling. Oh, it's a dumpling? That is, yeah. Oh, wow. What I did not tell you at the beginning is that you all are entitled to our free beer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Any more? Any more first-time hashers? Let's give the virgins a round of applause. This was a baptism by fire. They're all back. All back. It's not usually this bad, so please come back. This was a hard one. So you can say you, you went to a hash and you did a tough one. All right? Now, at the beginning of today's proceedings, I didn't tell you about the free bear, but you're going to get one. Only one. I did tell you about the certificate of loss of virginity. Right, so certificate of loss of virginity reads, Be it known by all and sundry that as of today the bearer of this certificate, having done it with all of us, sometimes rough, sometimes wet, Sometimes dry, sometimes hard, sometimes prone, sometimes supine, sometimes slow, sometimes fast. Bowling out a lot of unintelligible phrases like are you, on on, on in, and on back. Grunting, groaning, and shouting expletives in the mud, sand, rivers, and streams. On hillsides and in the bushes and trails of the forest. And having completed this long ordeal, absolutely exhausted, sweaty, and smelling like a ram goat <laughs> is henceforth not to be considered a virgin by any member of the Grenada Hash House Harriers. This was held today, we know. We're not sorry, but we know. We want to take a photograph, we want to memorialize you. Memorialize you on the hash page, you'll be stars forever. You'll remember that, yeah, today I nearly died. All right, so on three, we're gonna shove your hands in the air Shout big, a big on, on, and the flash will just go on, on. One, two, three. Oh. 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 All right. Oh. All right. Oh. 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 That must have been free beer. That's the free right. beer. That was the free beer. That was the free beer. That's a round of applause.
So we've just managed to hoist up the new Furlex and the Forestay and yeah, the next thing that we need to do now is going to secure it at the top of the mast. At the moment it's only on with a halyard and then once we've done that we're going to come down, secure it on the new base plate that we've got down here and yeah, that's pretty much everything we need to do at this stage. We'll do a lot more work and a rebar on this, getting all the running rigging done and everything but yeah, this is pretty much the bulk of the work done now, which is amazing. Okay, can you lower it down a bit? Okay, the split pin's in, I'm just gonna pull it out. We are on. Okay, I'm just gonna take off the rolling hitch. Yeah, I've got two plastic spaces inside. I can't get any metal ones on the other side though. Okay, um, can you loosen off the green and then slowly bring me down? What are you doing this morning? We've got to loosen our backstays in order to get the new four stay on there just because we're about an inch away at the moment. But I think after loosening these, it'll give us Wait, the... Are you going to tape it? Yeah, I'm going to tape yeah, it. I'm going to take the split pins out first. Yeah, awesome. And we'll go from there. Awesome. Uh, it's really droopy right now, so... Okay. But like that droopy and... Does it feel real? And we've only got two four stays. Don't worry about the plastic washer, just try and get it vaguely through. <laughs> Holding. I can't get the pin in. Okay, wait. Let me hold it down and you push the pin in. Oh no, maybe it's pin it won't go in. Oh yeah, get the drum on the set. We're almost there with all this now. We've got most of it assembled, and so I can kind of assemble to the other one now. We've just got to figure out how to get all of this back onto there now. Bit of a mess, but I think I've got this figured out, so hopefully in half an hour, this will just about be done. It's nice we've already got one there, it's exactly the same to match. Yeah. There's a pain getting this bolt in because you've got to line up everything in here yeah. to get that in as well. Okay. Good job. Uh, but I think, yeah, you can get under that. Can you get under that afterwards? What? Will you be able to get that under that afterwards? Yeah, that should be fine because yeah. it's got a gap there. Lovely. Okay, now this one. Uh, so that like pulls up yeah. and snaps in, so mm -hmm. we must have to put this on first then. Yeah, tighten that one in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is it in again? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, something's not right there. Something's getting stuck there, I think. Yeah, the whole thing goes up high. There's not one. It's because that there's something wrong here. Oh no, because once the sail is attached to there, Zach. Yeah, but then this whole thing still needs to be able to rotate. 
it doesn't. So we, we messed something up in this. God, furlexes are actually pretty complex things, aren't they? So I've just found the issue. We should have noticed this, really. So at the moment, that's getting stuck. I'm really, oh, stuck. really stuck. What it is, is I've just put this one in just as a proof of concept. We need two bolts for in here because oh. this whole thing should be supported about there. Oh yeah, you can see the hole. There's two yeah, holes. Yeah, there's two holes. And once I put this in, the whole thing, like, and it sits on that and it goes. Oh, so yeah, I awesome. could do with uh, two of a similar size. I don't think they need the pointed ends, um, but I'm going to come to the shop with you and okay. come get two of these. Awesome. And then that should be fine. Yeah, nice. Yeah? Yeah, that's the right thread. So. Yeah, and that looks like the right length, doesn't it? A bit, little bit shorter, if possible. I thought you What's wanted that? it a bit longer then. It's really oh. Sweet. Yeah, you're happy. Yeah, really happy. Give her a whirl. Nice. Oh yeah, she's a good curler. It's a bit of wear and tear on her, but she thinks she's alright. Yeah, this furler definitely has a story behind it, doesn't it? Yeah, I really want to know what happened to it. She's been given a second lease of life. 